It is uh, such a blessing to be back with you uh, on this Wednesday evening. I want to thank God for Elder Kevin Merriweather for all the teachings, and I thank God for his faithfulness. Thank God for him being called to the ministry and stepping in and doing an excellent job. Um, he will be coming back from time to time. And uh, he is very, very, very special and useful in this ministry. Uh, we're all unified and we're all a good family here. So we just thank God for him. I praise God for him. Uh, I was able to, to do some other things, to get some rest, to kind of um, get some other down, fresh downloads from the Lord. And I uh, just thank God that he has sent an awesome mature vessel uh, that we can work together in the vineyard and further what God has called us to do. So once again, uh, Elder, God bless you. Uh, we pray for your family, and we pray that God will continue to lead and guide you and strengthen you, that you may continue to stand on the wall and work for him. God bless you. So today, we're so glad to have you back uh, with us, and uh, we want to talk about total transformation. We want to talk about total transformation. I want you to remember that God wants to transform our whole man, the total man, the complete man. And I want to kind of take my time here, and I want you to realize that we as human beings, we as uh, saved individuals, we are made and created in the image of God. And that's what it tells us, the book of Genesis tells us. And so God is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He's a triune God. All right? And so I want us to remember that we are tripartite beings. Mankind, every human being is made up of three parts. So as we go into 1 Thessalonians, we're going to see over in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, we're going to see where Paul was talking to uh, the church at Thessalonica, and he was saying that he wanted them to be whole, and he mentioned spirit, soul, and body. And what we have to realize is that we are made up of spirit, we're made up of soul, and we have a body. So the spirit man and the soul lives inside of the body, and God wants to make all three of those entities whole. Every one of those entities, our spirit has to be strong, our spirit has to be transformed, our soul has to be strong, our soul has to be transformed, and then the body is what houses the spirit and the soul. And the body has to be transformed also because, you know, we go through muscle memory, we go through uh, habits and patterns and cravings and so on and so forth. And so it's God's will so that we can have a victorious life and be effective in helping others to change and influence them to change for the kingdom. We have to make sure that we deal with the total man and the total man is made whole. And so we have to remember that we're three part now because a lot of times people, they say like, well, you know, I gave my life to Christ and, and, and I asked him to come into my heart. And I know he saved me, but I keep doing these things, and I just don't understand. Am I saved today, and when I do wrong, am I unsaved tomorrow? You know, um, I feel real good, and I'm excited, and I feel the Spirit of God, and the presence of God, and the anointing of God around the saints and in the sanctuary, and when I pray. But then when I get to work, and these people make me mad, or I get home, and these people make me mad, and certain things I say, I just don't feel the same. And I feel like, you know, I disappointed God, and, and I'm unsaved again, and I have to. But, yeah, you do need to repent, but you're still saved. But you have to understand, and these teachings are to help you understand that God wants to transform the whole man, the spirit, the soul, and the body. And it takes time for that. It takes understanding. When you better understand your makeup, when you better understand uh, what it is that you, uh, how you function, how your, how, how, your, uh, how your body functions, how your soul functions, and how your spirit man functions, when you better understand that, then you are able to move through some challenges and some issues 
and you understand uh, the power that you have over the enemy, and you also understand the authority that you have uh, in the body of Christ, and should I say the authority that you have as being a Christian and a believer. So let's take a look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 in the Amplified. Paul says, he says, and may the God of peace himself sanctify you. So God is a God of peace. And not only is he a God of peace, he is the one that sanctifies us. And he sanctifies us through a process and through development. When we first come to the Lord, we first of all, we hear the word by faith. Faith coming by hearing and hearing the word of God. So when we begin to hear the word of God and we come to God, And then we begin to believe the word that we hear. And then according to Romans 10, 9 and 10, we ask the Lord to come into our life and be the Lord of our life. We repent. uh, We ask him to forgive us and so on and so forth. After that, then the, 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 the spirit of God comes in us. But then there is a from that point on, there is a process that goes on. There is a process of sanctification because. Uh, We were set apart from God. We were enmity and we were enemies of God. And so now the God of peace, who who does the sanctifying, who is holy, he has now come into our life, changed our life. And now he's going to sanctify us and he's going to sanctify us holy. Notice he says, and may the God of peace himself sanctify you. How is God going to sanctify us? Through and through. Through and through. That means from the beginning to the end. All the way through, that means he's going to sanctify our spirit, man. He's going to sanctify our soul, and he's going to sanctify these bodies. And he's going to do a thorough job. And it depends on how much sin you did. It depends on how much foolishness you walked in before you got saved. It's going to determine, you know, how much work God is going to have to do. And that's why it's so important that we train our kids up, that we get them involved in kingdom, and we talk to them about Christ. And when they're little ones and teach them about salvation and doing right and wrong so that when it's time for them to reach the age of accountability and they give their life to Christ and they understand what it is that God is doing in them, then they don't have all of this. They don't have a big old list and a big old uh, uh, they got all of these things that God has to sanctify because they've experienced all this crazy stuff, messed up stuff in their life. And the secular culture has has come in and just got them uh, bad habits and so on and so forth. So it's important that we allow God, God, the peace, it says, and may God of peace himself sanctify you through and through from beginning to end all the way through. And so we have to understand that God is interested in sanctifying, that is making holy every part of your being. God is interested in sanctifying and making whole every part of your being. Okay? So, when the Spirit of God comes in and the Holy Spirit comes in, immediately your dead spirit becomes alive. He's going to sanctify that, the spiritual part of you. Your human spirit is going to be sanctified. He's going to turn around and sanctify your soul, which is a process. And then he's going to sanctify your body because you can't see. You have to understand about the body. The body just carries out what the commands are from the spirit or from the soul. And we're going to be talking about if you if you're walking in the spirit, then the spirit man is the one that's in control and your body is going to carry out the commands of the spirit man. If your spirit man is dead or is seared or it's a situation where uh, you you have 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 laid him to the side. and You have quenched him. Then your soul man, which is a self life, is going to be in control and your body is going to carry that out. And a lot of people, particular believers, they they mistake the spirit life uh, for the soul life. They think they're walking in the spirit, but they're actually walking in the soulless, the self life. And that's why in their bodies, you see them uh, say the wrong things. They have the wrong habits. Uh, They have bad emotions. And the list goes on and on and on. And so here again, God is interested in sanctifying making us holy, every part of our being. Notice here, when we're looking at this, this verse, he says, he says, he says, separate you from profane things. So may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through from the beginning to the end. Okay, and separate you from profane things. What are profane things? Things that are ungodly. Things that the enemy uh, rest and rule and abide in. 
Profane things are the things that are unholy, the things that are in direct opposition of God, his ways, his words, his thoughts, his actions, his operation. He wants to separate us from profane things. And what is he going to do when he separates? Because he's just not going to separate us and then leave us to ourselves. He's not going to separate us and leave us empty. He's not going to separate us and allow us to just be uh, just wide open and open to any and everything. He separates us for a reason. So he separates us to make us pure. It says make you pure and wholly consecrated to God. He separates us from the profane things to make us pure so that we can be exclusively, absolutely, entirely devoted to God. And let me tell you something. You can say that. We can read this. You can hear it. But to perform that, it takes practice. It takes dedication it takes sacrifice, it takes fighting, it takes prayer, it takes fasting, it takes praying in English, praying in tongues, going into warfare, interceding. It takes all of these things in order for you to allow God to separate you from, from, from profane things and to make you pure and holy and consecrated to him. Holy, absolutely devoted to God. I will submit to you that the average Christian is not exclusively, totally, completely submissive and devoted to God. You know how I know? Because of the choice. You can tell by the choices that they make. When it, comes to be, when it comes to the things that be of God and it's something that they want to do or something that they love to do, they always put God second, third, or fourth. They always put him on the back burner. If they have something planned and God's will is to be done in that area or somebody needs, the kingdom needs them or God needs them, they come up with an excuse. They, uh, they come up with their own selfish reasons why they cannot and most of the time will not. When you're talking about devoted to God, totally devoted to God, when you give your life to him, your spirit man is changed. But to be totally devoted to him, guess what else you have to give him? You have to let him penetrate and infiltrate your soul. So you have to make sure that God has your mind, that he has your thoughts, your intellect, the way you process things, the way you analyze God has to be in control of all of that. God has to have your emotion. God has to be in control of the way you feel, your desires. You know, God has to be in control of all that. All of that has to be in all of that has to be laid at the feet of Jesus so that he can do what he wants to. Uh, God has to be in control of your will. You have to decide that God is going to make choices for you. You have to say, Lord, not my will be done, but your will be done. And so you have to know the will of God by studying and, and reading the word, of, the word of God because that is his will. And once you understand what the will of God is for your life or anything containing your life that concerns your life, then you are to walk in that and let God sanctify you, make you whole, make you holy. Because at the end of the day, through your mind, through your emotions, through your will, through your body, through your spirit, man, through your soul. God wants you to exemplify and look like Jesus. God wants you to exemplify and walk in the image of his dear son, Jesus Christ. And so we have to understand that I've got to give everything to God. I can't just give him my spirit and do what I want to do in my body. I can't just give him my soul and do what I want to do and, 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 and be up and down in my spirit and, and all over the place in my body. I, we've got to make sure that we give God our everything. He wants the whole man. We are tripartite beings, spirit, soul, and body. We are spirits that live in a body, possess a soul. God wants all of us, all of us, every part of us. We cannot leave him out any part of us because the part that we leave God out is the part that the enemy is going to creep in.
And most of the time, the enemy he can't get once God calls you to be born again, once your spirit man is born again and becomes alive, then 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 the enemy can't touch that part of you. But there is a part of you that the enemy can touch because it's never saved. It's always in the process of being saved. It never gets saved. It's in the process of being saved. Somebody might not like what we're saying here, but it is the truth. Your soul never gets saved. It's always in the process of, of being saved. And so what has to happen is you have to make sure that, 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 that the word of God infiltrates your soul by way of altering and transforming your thinking. Altering and transforming um, uh, not only just the way you think, but getting into your emotions. That is what drives you. That is your passion, okay? Okay. Get into that and sanctify that and also that that he gets in and, and, and sanctifies and, and, and operates through your will. And so the enemy, the this, this part where the enemy comes in is he comes into your soul. That means he comes into your mind. He gets into your emotions and he gets into your decision making. And you never have to worry about the body because if the soul, if the enemy is, is, has infiltrated your soul, mind, emotions and will, then your body is going to carry those functions out. Because the body, remember, is just the slave to whichever one is in control. If the spirit man is in control, then you will have a holy body because because the body is going to be a slave and it's going to carry out that which the spirit man commands it. But if the soul life, the self life is in control, then the body is going to carry out the self life. And most of the time, the enemy is going to get in there all the time because he's not he's not powerful enough to, to, to do anything with your spirit, man. So he gets into your mind. He gets into your thinking because the battle, the, 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 the battleground starts in the mind. So he gets in your mind. He wants to try to get you to think certain things. He gets into your emotion. He wants you to feel a certain way. And he once he gets your mind uh, operating a certain way and thinking a certain way and get you feeling in a certain way, then he wants to manipulate your will so that you make poor decisions. And most Christians, most saints, uh, when it comes to, 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 to doing the things that they need to do, they make one poor decision after the other. One series of poor decisions after the other. And they don't understand why their result is always bad. Because they continue to make one decision after the other. You cannot just read the Bible and get your mind sanctified. You have to walk daily through this life and as you encounter different things, as you analyze and make decisions and overcome and, 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 and solve problems, all of this is a sanctification process and you have to do it every day, all day long. It has to be your way of life. If you all over the place in your thought life, you need to rein in your mind, you need to rein in your thoughts and you need to make sure that you understand like the Bible says, let this mind being you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So what would Jesus do? How does Jesus think? How does he process this? What decision would he make right here? What would he say right there? How does he feel about this and that and the other? That's what we have to do. And then we have to walk it out. And as you walk it out, the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And so as you're walking it out and being led by the Holy Spirit, uh, you, 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 you learn some things, you learn how to be, you learn how to, to leave this alone, you learn how to, to, to embrace that, you learn how to keep this, throw that away, tear that out, uh, 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 develop this. All of that is, is called transformation. Okay, it's, it's about transformation. You remember what Romans said, Romans 12 too. Be not conformed to this world, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. So your mind has to be renewed in the word of God. See, let me tell you about the word of God. The word of God comes in and it's a spark. It's an opening. It comes in and it opens up your mind because your mind is closed. So it opens it up to the ways of Christ. Your mind is closed because of the bad and poor habits. So it opens it up to the will of God and, and how God think in his operation, how he does things. And it, your mind opens up as to how God analyzes and how he problem solves and how he fixes things. Your mind opens up to that. But we have to make sure. That, and so we got to start somewhere. We got to start somewhere. So I want you to realize, because, see, you got to understand, we got this thing called sin. 
we'll talk about this next week. We have this thing called sin. And, 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 and we see it over in Proverbs, I mean, over in Psalms 51.5. It talks about the fact that we were born wrong. 51.5, behold, I was brought forth in a state of iniquity. My mother was sinful who conceived me, and I too am sinful. And then Romans 6.23 says, for the wages which sin pays is death, but the bountiful free gift of God is eternal life through in union with Jesus Christ our Lord. So the problem we have is that we are, were born in the sin, and the Spirit of God came in when we asked God to come into our life. The Spirit of God came in, made our spirit man alive. Our soul man did not get saved. It's in transformation, and the body is going to always do which part of us is giving us the command, whether the spirit man of us or the soul man. And so we have to understand that as we were walking in sin, the problem is, is not that we're saved and the spirit of God is on the inside of us. The problem is, is that this spirit man still lives in this fallen body, this fallen uh, propensity to sin. And so we have to have transformation. Can we do it? Can we get there? Yes, we can. But we're not going to be complete until we get out of here. But in the meantime, we have to understand how we operate. We have to understand that we're spirit, soul, and body, and not God wants our spirit to be whole. He wants our soul to be whole, and he wants our body to be whole. But the way we're going to make sure that we're on the right track is that we got to always daily, through reading, through prayer, through exercising, and walking in the word of God, as our soul is transformed, then we're going to be holy, sanctified, set apart and consecrated to God. I want you to dissect this. I want you to go over these scriptures. I want you to listen to this over and over again and understand if you get these principles and this teaching down, there's going to be a better you walking around. You're going to continue to be transformed in the highest way possible and God is going to be able to use you to defeat the enemy and to sow and to prosper, be, to be able to sow and prosper, have a prosperous life. God bless you for listening. And we will be back on the appointed time to continue this. Thank you so much. God bless you.